Well, welcome in the precious and glorious name of Jesus to the wake up call. My name is Robert Pears. We are living in perilous times and we've got to recognize the hour and more importantly, know what to do. And I want to share with you one of the strategies of the enemy because the word declares that we're not to be ignorant of these strategies. We should know them. And the current strategy, one of the great strategies he is working right now is the control of the narrative. And we've got to recognize the consequences. There's more at stake than you and I can imagine. And we are placed here purposely by God and anointed. And you need to have a living relationship with the living God, where you receive that word from His heart, placed into your heart with an abundance so that it flows out of you. It's got to be real. In this hour, as I will show you, the enemy is so presenting and controlling the narrative, not just to persuade them of a truth that they want them to believe, but it is an anti-Bible attack. It is to so persuade them that this word is wrong and that science has worked it all out. Even though they will violate the laws of science, they don't care because they're more interested in their narrative, their spin, and having people believe this. And if we don't make a stand as vessels of speaking the truth and vessels of intercession, more is at stake, your children, your family. So it's essential that we know how now more than ever to have this now abiding and the word is changing us and they see a real Jesus in us doing real things, transforming us. We must be changed. We cannot go on doing the old Christianity, it has to be the real Christianity, us found in the secret place, being transformed into His image by His Word. Let me start by praying and let's press in because I believe this is such an important word that we understand what the enemy is doing and how to stand. Father, we come in the name of Jesus. We come to Your Word. We declare that Your Word is the foundation of all truth and our lives are built upon it, hearing it and doing it. So give us ears to hear, give us eyes to see, and give us a hearing heart. And let us receive by your Spirit rich, deep revelation from the treasure of your heart found in the Word that we might know. And Father God, that we may be those that walk according to your Word, that we delight in your Word, that Jesus, you may be glorified in our lives, revealed, and I thank you, Holy Spirit, and thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray, and the church said amen. The ministry of the Holy Spirit, there's two things going on. The ministry of the Holy Spirit is to take us and always point to the Word, and in the Word, reveal Jesus. Reveal what Jesus did and who you now are in Him. To convict you, to lift you, to, show, so, uh, to convince you of receiving what Jesus did and how as you receive it, all the benefits, how you were changed and transformed and lifted. Oh my God, God wants to bring us into this glorious place, in that secret place that you might know. The Holy Spirit is always trying to bring us in. But the enemy wants to keep people out. He wants to so condemn, and in this hour he's seeking because he hates the fact that you and I are made in God's image and have the capacity to have such fellowship and have the living God abide in us and change us. And He wants to make you so corrupt, so impure, so that you're not even human. And God made us humans in His image. There's something beautiful and powerful about us humans. And He hates us with a passion. And the message of this hour is to so destroy the state that humans are no good. They're no good and must be changed, and only we can. But we've got to remove the Word, and it's an attack against the Word. And it's such a persuasive attack. We're told there's a deception that's come on the earth right now that even the elite could be deceived by it. And it's so convincing because it sounds so good. And part of it is because of the control of the narrative. There are many bills right now. Let me just go back one second, if I may. Um, if I read, for example, in Revelation 13, we see the rise of the Antichrist. Now, we're not at that place yet, but we're getting close. And we're seeing the rise of the spirit of Antichrist. And so as we look at the Antichrist, we can see behind it the spirit that is arising right now. And of course, that spirit's been around for a while. But in Revelation 13, 5, regarding the Antichrist, and it said he was given a mouth, speaking things, great things, and blasphemies, 
and he was given authority to continue for 42 months. A couple things we need to see there. Number one, the enemy is always restricted to time, but God is not. Aren't you grateful? And we serve the God who knows the end from the beginning. And I can look at the book and I can see how it ends. We win because Jesus is Lord and nothing is allowed to happen outside of his purpose or his plan. Jesus is Lord. We serve the one who's already won the victory and he wants us to bring us so that we're walking in that victory even now on this earth and that the world might see it and our loved ones might know it. Now the enemy, it says here, a mouth is given. And so I see in that, that there's such a control of what's being allowed to be heard and seen and watched. And I'll show you right now, they're working on that. And then of course there's a 2030 agenda on this. And we have to realize that Christian thought is counter to current thinking in ways. And so the more we move forward, the more Christian thoughts and ideas must be stopped. They don't work with. They're against. They're an enemy to. And so if they don't do something, this is counter to. And so there's a controlling of this narrative, and we see the enemy will be given a mouth to speak whatever he wants and to speak great blasphemies against the living God. Now you might say, I don't see that happening. I'll show you in a minute. And there's great control and there's great power right now. Now, some of it, you look at the 30,000 foot view, is powerful. You know, you think about all the information they're able to gather. And AI and all these tools, various, you know, internet people can do and bring, that they can really understand you better than you. And they can use this powerfully regarding sickness and disease and so many things. And so there's great power, but it also gives great danger. And that's what I'm talking about is a great danger. Now, I want to share with you uh, real quickly. There are several things we need to understand. First of all, is that these governments recognizing this power, and they do, understand that they must therefore prevent misinformation, disinformation, and we agree with that. But we also know the problem is when it is aimed one way. When an extremist can attack and put hatred and stuff like that on the internet, and yet a Christian is hindered from speaking Christian belief without hate, that's where we start to see the problem. Now, misinformation, disinformation, the WEF, the World Economic Forum, which has complete control right now, and most governments are now aligning with, most corporations are in it because they're, that's the only way they're going to be able to survive going forward. And they said, the WEF said, the disinformation is creating a polluting information environment that individuals and news organizations are still learning to navigate. And we know there's a lot of disinformation. We know there's a lot of misinformation out there. Social media platforms have a central but complex role in addressing these problems. Now, and then it says restoring trust in traditional media outlets and institutions is also key. If you look at surveys regarding trust in governments, it is at an all-time low. And so they understand that we need to get, you know, control misinformation, disinformation. But the fact checkers, and we've seen that, have all been leaning one way. And so instead of being neutral, instead of being real, and if I go a little further, let me share with you uh, quickly. There's a couple of bills while I get there that are going through, for example, C11 bill in Canada that even Google spoke out against. Um, really it's going to bring Canada to a place similar to North Korea. And we see right now, of course, what's going through the Supreme Court. Um, there's bills going through in Europe. And if we look at the future, there really is a need, and they understand it, to control this powerful tool that's out there called the Internet, where people can share so much information. But a lot of that is counter to the agenda of these elitists, and that's where we're having this attack. Now, I wanted to go point out some things here, um, and I'm speaking from Dr. Yuval Noah, and of course, he's the advisor to the World Economic Forum. So you start to see, if you pull from the World Economic Forum, you're looking at it, and you see that they, they're stating very clearly, we need to control this mis- and disinformation, and I quote it from them. But look at what he's saying. Thus, the ancient Jews believed that it, if they suffer from a drought, or if King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon invaded Judea and ex exiled his people, surely these were divine judgments for their sins. And if King Cyrus of 
Persia defeated the Babylonians and allowed the Jews exiles to return home and rebuild Jerusalem, God in His mercy must have heard their prayer, remorseful prayers. The Bible doesn't recognize the possibility that perhaps the drought resulted from a volcanic eruption in the Philippines, that Nebuchadnezzar invaded in pursuit of Babylonian commercial interest, and that King Cyrus had his own political reasons to favor the Jews. Now that, you start to see the story. Well, that may be true, but see, God used that, and God has kept an eternal purpose, and God's promises towards the Jewish people, despite all, have been fulfilled. They are restored back as a nation by the miracle God. And despite so many attacks and efforts to destroy them, they still stand because God's promises are faithful and they don't look at that. But they're so spinning and say, but yeah, but see this. And this is what they're telling your children. This is what they're telling them. And right now there are things in place where they want to take, when a child comes into kindergarten and those you know, early ages, watch and monitor what's on their phone so they only can listen to one media outlet that speaks the message they want to hear and that they will then hear that in school. They want to take and pass bills here where they will not allow Christians to homeschool their children and so as their words propagand them so they're not hearing the message of this inclusive message for this hour. There really is. See, it's an anti-Christian. It's not an anti-God. It is an anti-Christian movement right now. And it is anti-Christian, it's also anti the Judean Bible. And so we've got to understand what's going on. They went on to say, unfortunately, blind faith in these stories meant that human efforts frequently focused on increasing the glory of fictional entities, such as God and nations, instead of bettering the lives of real sentiment beings. So you become a being. If you read on, you're just a mere animal controlled by algorithms. They just lower you. The God of the Bible lifts you and says, you're precious. And they like, you're playing these fictional games. Listen, if you read with the word, what we're standing for is God wants to so lift you and bring you into something. He's not trying to deny you from something. He's trying to lift you. He's not trying to take, he's trying to take that which is hurting and destroying you and give you life. They're not telling you that. They're not showing that. And right now they're so propagandizing people with this lie. To so convince them, listen. And the only way that they will know the truth is they see it in you as a constant living witness of that. And you are behind the scenes. We're like an iceberg where 90% of us is behind the scenes seeking the face of God, crying out and interceding that number one, that we will be real before Him. And number two, that these people might have eyes to see, ears to hear so that we're changed and we're walking living epistles of truth and the power of the word. That it's not a lie. And there's truth. Science would demand that all things that have valid uh, evidence to support it be tested and checked. And you will find the word. I want to do an episode one of these days on the faithfulness of God's promises, what He's done for the children of Israel. And if He will do it for them, He will do it for you. And He's faithful. His word has not failed. So they think about to communicate and thus deploy the power of imagination. Nothing more is more effective than the power of narratives. That is to just say, developing stories that are both pertinent and convincing to others. This is the best way to motivate those whom we interact socially, politically, and economically to move the agenda forward. Did you hear? This is what they want. To communicate and thus deploy the power of imagination and nothing is more effective than the power of narratives. That is to say, developing stories that are both pertinent and convincing to others. This is the best way to motivate those with whom we interact socially, politically, and economically to move the agenda forward. They're all about this agenda and meeting their timeline. And if it's not on God's timeline, it will be delayed because Jesus is Lord. But you and I must recognize what is going on. Canadian presidents in the World Economic Forum, most of the Canadian government are. You wonder why we're seeing things happen there. Many world leaders, most businesses, if you check your business, you're probably going to find your company. If it's any size, it's in the World Economic Forum. And it has to comply with these UN and World Economic Forum mandates. And this is where they're going. 
So if you and I don't recognize what is happening out there and what is being given, the story that has been told our children and our loved ones, you wonder why they're rebelling. You wonder why they're struggling. You need to be found now more than ever seeking His face because you've got to have that real relationship with Him in the secret place so that as Jesus declared in the book of Revelation, chapter 3, if the enemy is given a mouth, it says, Behold, I said before you an open door. You don't believe me. Go to the book of Revelation, chapter 3. Speaking to the church of this hour, part of the church of Philadelphia. Verse 7, second part. These things, he says, he who is holy, who is true. Underline that. He who has the key of David, who opens and no one shuts, and shuts and no one opens. I know your works. Aren't you glad he knows all your labors of love? We think we've been looked over. We think that, what are we doing? It's nothing, especially in this hour behind the scenes. And God is a meeting thing as I know it. See, I've set before you an open door. And no one can shut it. But God, it looks like I can't. How can I speak? How can I reach? Everything shut. He says, I set before you an open door. Well, where is it? Just stay here. Stay focused on me. I'll show you. I'll lead you in it. It's by my doing and not yours. He said, for you have had little strength. How many people? It's like right now, God, I have little strength. Everything I'm trying is failing. It's not working. And God said, no, trust me. Trust me. And says, so you have kept my word and have not denied my name. So this is an hour to keep treasure, have that word abiding in you and refuse to deny his name. Oh, I pray. I'm doing several new videos on the secret place that you would watch those and let the Spirit of God take you deeper than you've ever been into this relationship with Him and with His Word so that you build your life upon the foundation and truth of His Word. And that's the narrative that is so strong in you. And out of the abundance of your heart, it comes forth in word, in deed, and in love. And it's real. And people see something that's real and true and effective and powerful because it's changing you. Amen. Oh, I pray that this message would so stir you and bless you and encourage you and you lay hold of what the enemy's trying to do. There's some stuff we got to turn off. Be careful because what captures the eyes, what captures the ears will capture the mind and then the heart. And it's all about starting with your mind share, as you said, so they get their agenda. We must control the narrative. Get the word. Let the word, because the word is greater. The word upholds all things. The Word made all things. The Word has overcome all things. Let the Word work in you. And let the Word work through you. Let the Word increase in you and it will increase around you. Did you get that? If the Word increases in you, it will increase around you. Amen. Well, this video has blessed you. Would you please like, share, and subscribe? Because as you do, you really do help us in this hour to reach as many backsliders and to make as many believers live boldly for Jesus by being secret place dwellers. Also, if you don't have a local church, consider joining us. Um, you can sign up at robertpairs.org on our church page and join us in our online church. And may it be a blessing. You'll hear messages that I don't often preach uh, on YouTube. And I thank you also that you would consider being a prayer partner. Because together, the impact that we have, I cannot do this thing alone. And I really believe that at the end of the day, we share the same reward. When we get to heaven, you'll see people like Jesus, or it's like Paul stand up and a large crowd with him. Those that stood with him, sponsored and helped and kept him receiving that reward. See, God is faithful. And I thank you for just considering prayerfully whether you're able to join officially and you'll receive our email newsletter, be invited to our services are just behind the scenes. I just appreciate you. For more information, go to the partner page on robertpairs.org. Well, I want to remind you as always that no matter what it looks like out there, because you're a secret place to other, this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it because through and for Him, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you.